Tenense Mendense. Und der Tick ist immer noch ein
Toronto is going to be a fight whenever the two teams do meet at the Toyondo Stadium. And Black Leopards are not going to lie down. Allow Chi to literally hold them at home. It's not going to happen. Leopards will never allow the Kings or the Chiefs to come around here and do as they as they please. Goal scorers battling it out this time around. Back down, Gale came off. Gale seems to be problem, seems to be trouble there for Black Leopard. They can't afford to lose him, especially what he brings on the field of play for the team. We need more and more of that from Toton Gale. Showcase what he can do. Deadly. Set pieces never like space. Shot from outside the penalty area also. Whenever the ball does fall short, he's always going to be very dangerous. A lot of teams know him very well. Our sundowns as far as they tell you about him. Some coaches will be angry at pay. Make it, I mean, if you look at the how set up and uh, that ball right on the side, I think uh, get it today, that here, 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 here view of where he wants to go, but he went to the to the far to the far left. But again, I must say that you'd expect a player to have those kind of of nippy, nippy injuries like the, the hamstring, because the match fitness is not like any other, uh, other players who've been playing more games than him. Look at now, Mendes is going down, and it tells you that the fact they are aware that yes, it's one one. But also, it really, we need to also try to maintain manage the game, and this kind of injury is right in the stretch. Tempo game between the two teams, all about three points here today. Black Leopards to survive relegation, can the Chiefs to extend their lead at the top in the low standings. Wow, well, you've seen two brilliant goals in score. Both coming from Sapi situation. Well, let's see now, Mendes have a bit to be called out a few times to get involved in this game here today. So it looks like in Gale's game is over. The look of things. He was holding on to his head stream when he went down. We spoke about the importance of, of match fitness, right? I, I, I think for me, it's because he's been playing for long. You can see, yeah, you understand why he's getting the, the, that hamstring muscles a bit stiffer. I, I know before the game, players do what we call muscle motivation, but it's not the same like a match. Match is the best teacher, up, right? And you get more, much fit up the more games you play. So you understand why he's having that, 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 that hamstring. You can see, he's just, I mean, he's feeling, he's feeling like, hey, I need to punish Kedach, but Jogo comes in. It gives them a different direct dimension. Well, he just came out to the field of play now. Jodong Thongo from Ivory Park in uh, the uh, eastern part of uh, Johannesburg. Former Rose United player, FC Cape Town player, Free State Stars. And the Black Leopards. He's now coming off the bench for the fifth time of the season. Tries a start of the season. And he's yet to find a back of the net. Only one assist for him. Scored at some stage. And now here they are going forward. Long ball paid in, and Musonda is in there and just snagged him. But the goalkeeper comes out and collects the ball this time around. Goes from the bench of a black leopard. They're happy. The fact that at least there are more bodies going forward now to try and find the goal here against the opponents. Don't sit back anymore. But also, we need to highlight the fact that that's up from Joe Bungele. Obviously, that means Joe is going to go on the right as an outlet, right? And obviously, Matabo will come as an outlet, an outlet on, the, on the left hand side. So, watch out for that relation between Zulu and Matabo on the other side, Mudao and, uh, and Joe. Very interesting to see how much of an impact that change would have. One of those, the coaches don't want to make changes like that one they just made now with Bungele having to leave the foot of play because of an injury. One coach will always tell you that's one way to change in a way. And it changes the way you are approaching the game continuously. Especially if you want to have an impact in the second half. You won't have the step player to bring it. It affects your preparation because during the week you've been preparing a certain way. Come the day of the game, the injury, which you obviously if you day of the game you won't predict that a player will get an injury. But again it affects how you prepare. So it needs to come up with a, a second strategy which you call a friendly. So I think it's not going to be a much challenging 
to break the bus because whatever can play any position. So the scoreline 1-1 one, one at the moment. That's out. Bernard Parker got injured. Again, sort of liberating. Black Leopards, one. Kaiser Chiefs, one. Last season, the two teams met. Chiefs, they went away against the Black Leopards. Final score was 1-1. One, one. He brought from one, he scored a goal. And then Adriana Rimanana, who's sitting on the bench at the moment. Perunes Ducks scored a goal for Kaiser Chiefs on the day. They were leading 1-0 for 10 minutes and almost like today will be scored just around 22 minutes today scored just after 30 minutes of the game black leopards equalizing in the game today the 33rd that's when the goal was scored here they come now Cardoso under pressure it's a long ball forward this time around just came on in fact I still remember last season when Paris played against black leopards Bongo scored a beauty off the bench against the Buccaneers. They lost the game, by the way. What a strike that was from him. Toho. Here comes Jürgen Sassmann. Collects the ball on the far side. Born in Grassy Park in the Western Cape. TNT at the Pizana in the Eastern Cape. As the ball goes out on the far side of the field. The has gone down. Looks like it's not Toho, is it? It's went out. Ball. A minute after the Kenya now the referee is having a word with his official. Zakele Siwela is a Vinyasa official far side. Karamukwena. There's also Kamusi. Ozimisani. Vigdo Dadoba. One. Amakosi. One. Matoho gets up. So we last five. He looks set to continue with this game. A yellow card is coming out. And looks like it is for the bench of Kaza Chiefs. They were not happy in the challenge of Matoa. And they said some things that are very unsavory. As they find themselves in trouble. The second or third yellow card for him this season. Have a look at that. Because he's been a few, having a few of those. It won't, be, it won't be quiet. This man speaks all day, Brian. I think he's got to is he the, the, the entire the contract? The second one, by the way. Second one. The third one already before today. So the second yellow card. And he's has been off. Still involved. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you should be as a coach. You must play with the game. Don't switch off them and, and eat your nails. is really having a handful here because the coach is always saying something to him. 1-1 one, one, the score line. If the game does end this way, there should be the 10 points. Two separate Chiefs and Mamoudi San now just behind them. Chucks into the penalty area. And this one put out. I tell you there, Castro, he didn't realize how much space he had. He would have done something different. He wanted to go in and take the ball first time around. What a keep. Cut the Chiefs. But watch out for Chiefs getting a second goal. The pads are not closing the first phase of defending. They are allowing the cross to be played inside the box. And the second lead in the box, the second phase, which to deal with the head, the, the guy who's supposed to get the ball, they definitely do not deal with that. So watch out for Chiefs, watch out for Chiefs getting a second ball. So let's see now the ball, Manyama whoops in one into the penalty area. Mukatanda is in there. Ball played back, alive again. We are about to come to the end of the first half, and it's an up and under. The box will be happy for that, but nothing. Oh, they went straight to the stands. Who are Kevin Johnson? What is the thinking at halftime? What is the thinking as far as the is concerned? I think with regards to Black Leopard's prime, it's very simple. Keep your two defensive uh, uh, block the, using the, the, the defense and the midfielder with the discipline within the framework of the team. And to create a screen using Mumuni and Perry and just remind them that to stay there because Gele is out now where there's responsibility to drop. But that's the relationship between Makaba and Zulu and Mudao and, 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 and so on the other side. It's very critical, especially when you're in, 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 in position. So it's very critical that Nepal must use the heat because that's what they normally do. When they play here, they use their heat. So that's how things are looking like at the moment. Black Leopards won. Pauline Gale scored in the equalizer. Samir Nutkovic scored the opener for the Amakosi. 1 1 the score and enough time in the Toyando Stadium. 18th of January 2020. So let's now cross and join the Fernaldino.
Soapies on one. Tata ki injwali. Batis le kuflo ma ba le kushiyo. Rakai tajwa. Because any further delay in production is just going to be very detrimental to my Nonyane deal. Tata ki injwali. Just in case you missed it, catch Skim Sum weekdays at 9.30 a.m. on SABC One Mzansi for sure. Soapies on one. Get up to speed with your favorite soapy. Catch Uzalo Omnibus Sundays at 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on SABC One Mzansi for sure. Soapies on one. Social media is not the way. Social media is not the way. Social media is not the way. Mama, I am not the way. Mama, I am not the involved. Enjoy zestful evenings with your favorite soapies on SABC One Mzanzi for sure. Daniel Akadoso, Daniel Ape, 
by his team and got his team in trouble. What kept you all in that situation, Brian? I think it, it, could, it, it could have been a bit of a crashing in that situation. Uh, Mayama would have seen with a defender here, so he was going to try to delay him. But again, quickly got, he went just casual. That's why Mayama was able to fight for that ball. He put in a lot of aggression on it. So let's see now another corner kick given to Father Chief this time around taken by Mayama. We've seen the ball into the penalty area, headed towards the far side, cleared away by Black Leopards. And kept in play this time here by Chiefs. Long ball, penalty area, flicked on! Well, almost a beautiful on goal. Just goes behind for a corner kick. Mendez was left in no man's land. And Mendez took no chance. Have a look at that. It was able to look the back of the net. But, but again, Brian, the first rule, immediately the ball goes out of the box, try to push up. Leopards are still sitting on the box. That is why you were able to play the ball back into the box and you see the numbers. It caused the, the, that, that deflection from from from, 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 from uh, Zulu. And it could have been an, an on goal, but again, Leopards needed to just push up because they sit on the box, allowing you to deliver this ball into the box.
see now ball played early. Cleared away by Lepers, collected near side of the field. Here they come with Mudau now going forward. We have one of Mussina's finest on the field of play. Another sitting on the bench, Kapinga. Come in, Mudau on the board again for Lepers. Here's Mudau. Ball comes out and should be a cold kick. The ball behind. They've done everything right. Kadoso managed to get the ball away. Kadoso could have played in Portugal. Because he does. Uh, the Portuguese decent, but he decided to play for South Africa. He was born. Maybe he was born. That's where he's uh, come, come from. Let's see now. Chance going forward. Yeah. Here comes Tintiantia. That one cleared away. Let's look at the defender's passes. Trying to feed one good, it was a ball. Good ball, Fred through towards penalty area, but Jima in there. Jima takes absolutely no chance. He will get the ball away first. But, but, but again, it's, it's something that he called defend to attack. He defend to attack immediately. So I think Jima just went because he was showing that he was rough on him, aggression on him. But again, if he was able to make a pass from that taken, immediately pass could have started the attack. from Black Leopards. Another ball towards Mudau with this time. Ball running away from him, goes out of play, will be a throw in this time. One ball, penalty, no Kovic is there. Move the ball down, next to him is Ntiantia. He choose to go with Manyama. Still a one Manyama. Throws down Ntiantia, caught there. <laughs> I tell you, silly tackle there. You can see over the top, Charles coming in. And he's not happy at all. Abu Bakr, Mumuni. Was it Leopards? Left Leopards has returned again to Black Leopards. He knows that he was very silly. That was the ball was gone, and all he had to do was probably try and guide Intiantia out. Have a look at this. Push the ball away. Yeah. It was not today. We started with him, and I don't know why he's feeling innocent in that situation because he started with with in that situation. something wrong and you come out and you claim nothing wrong you don't understand why the referee is giving you a blue kick or even talking to you you always want to gain advantage what do you expect set piece chiefs again chance here now for long ball played in walked in and cleared away collected here by Ntiantia sends the ball back into the penalty area still alive yes Katande and Bakas missed the first chance Bakas ball in Mato Shot straight to the man in front of him. Who defend you from Leopards? They were caught in Cena Sevens for a moment, but a minute to recover and get the ball away. But here comes Mashaba, goes in wide towards the far side of the field now for Black Leopards. And they march on forward, going toward the penalty area, looking for options. Very important play shot towards the far side. Robert Nambi keeps the ball in play. Leopard, Bongo, shoot and straight to the man in front of him. Again for Leopards, Zulu's ball this time. Just wide for Makaba. I like the tra offensive transition from Leopards, but again, we must like the fact that very good defending from Masia in that situation. The Scars is sitting on Kitty Piawa. Defend on the season in that situation. Immediately, Leopards were on offensive tra transition, but again, I like Makaba. Good connection and good cross from Muslim in that situation. This is Kitty. 1 1, there's no line. Masangotoma <laughs> Sudah Kami lebih rapat di ekspres tu ekspres tangsa. 
has also scored four goals, so between 11 goals at least for Chiefs in the league so far this season. But here comes Zuma. Zuma finds Bakas. Born in Durban, but grew up in Australia. Korea, Bakas. His younger brother, also a footballer. He was one team at some stage in their careers. Ball brings it away again from Black Leopards. Katanga gets the ball pass out for Chiefs. Here comes Novkovic. Well marked. They have Jumak, who's always worth a Novkovic every time the ball comes his way. Here's Zuma now. He's buoyed by the fact that he has won the goal of the month, by the way. They've already scored one of the matches. So he has voted as goal of the month. So he is a man on a mission. Muleko's ball. Nurkovic, intended recipient, but away by Mumuni, and ball goes out on the far side now. We are still sitting in this encounter. Chiefs one, Black Leopards one. We are in the second half of the match. We are moments away before the end of this game. Who wanted more? Is a big question. On ball, Tadian keeper comes out again. Gets the ball away. Only as far as in Tianti, can he go himself? Tianti! Shoot to the stands, the ball goes. Unfamiliar territory for Tianti. Maybe that's why he took that kind of a shot, but again, he must have like Leopard are sending everybody at the back, right? Especially when it comes to standard situation. Every Leopard square goes at the back. But they immediately they regain for seal. In order to have that successful offensive penalty, they don't have a reference point. But they don't have both everybody has dropped back to try to help to defend. I mean, I have to say, Abubakar Mumuni has done very well today for Black Leopards. He has uh, covered well alongside Edwin Jumar. The two Ghanaians have been given a job to look after one Norkovic and one Pastor. I think Mumuni for me has done, has done well in that center for oh, oh. That's a little bit for poor people, but very calm. And it is making sure it is screening very well for Juma and then and, and, and Masia. They signed him from a new Ubiase in Ghana. He went to Black Leopards, returned to Amiri Sundowns after the long stand came to an end. And eventually went to the long stand to Vasco da Gama. So that to move around the lot before finding his way at Free State Stars, Richard Bay FC. And then Royal Eagles, and then now Black Leopards returning yet again to Lidoda Doba. Okay, these are starts so far. Three starts and four appearances of the bench. And Leopards about to bring in a man who broke the heart of the Amakosis. When you go back to the 2010-2011 season, while still playing for Barroca then. Tovani Mwanga. As Swallows about him that season. As Kaiser Chiefs about him that season. You know him very well. Kulukwani City had a fall out of Kulukwani City, was supposed to have gone and he went to Pibut's Vets. Also didn't work out where he find himself now playing his football. As the Black Leopards, he comes in now. And his twin brother is Tobisi. He plays football. He back in a case of that as he comes on now for Black Leopards. He is a goal poacher of note. Goal poacher of note, but he hasn't done anything like you've said. I'll let it, it, it back right, for the last two years, three years. But I'm hoping that match fitness wise, He's there, but again, confidence also, which becomes a physical effect of the players. So we're now looking to see how Black Leopards are going to end this one. They brought on to one in Mwango. He will be looking for a goal here today for his team. All that matters. Black Leopards currently one. Kata Chiefs one. To the Mwango, paying the ball. But also, sends one forward. Now he's there. Let that one go out easily. What does this result mean from a Black Leopards point of view? And now, if the game does end this way for them, they'll get an extra point to the one they have coming into this game. It can go a long way, by the way. Because you'll see them move from 15 to the block standings. The goal just above Amazon, who lost yesterday in a case of a derby against Madisburg United. Another good interception. For Black Leopards, there by Isaac Masia. Now beyond 17 points, the same as Barroca, Cape Town City, FC, and Amazulu. Because of a better goal difference, they'll see themselves going and leapfrogging Amazulu into 13th position, 14th position, I beg your pardon. And Amazulu go 14th in the rock standings. To look on the CT, we've already played 18 matches. And Amazulu has already played a game more than Black Leopards, the same as Barroca. So Black Leopards now are still a game behind Barroca and Amazulu. Just gone. 
sandwich between Baroque and Amazulu after this game. If the game does end this way, for Chiefs, it will therefore mean they are now 10 points clear of Sundowns, who will be in action tomorrow against Super Sport United in the Tuan Garden. Simani had a lot to say in those matches. So now, going towards the end of the match already. Gone in the last five minutes of this game. Desim Giri. 1 1 the scoreline. Sugo Mombe. Tando Kupuga and his captain said against Chimara for getting it good in the brain. And Sakura, we're going to get Bobam in general to get new to Abakuna, Abakuza, Abakatu, Kuru, Manyama. That's the problem. If you're not going to get in the world, Manyama. Kaizajibza, <laughs> Isaac <laughs> Machaba Kuka U Daniel Akadoso Lepata Gana Siskati is in a pair of swimming in the swimming of the Sasman, 
Hotzo. Castro. Leonardo Castro. Echo of Castro. Kuka Ukubi Sobodau. Kanga in the engines of Emasuma Aditoba. Assessing the net of Zimunia. Tabo Machaba. Festival. Agulalo. Kuka U Eric Matoho. Bakas. Kaiser Chiefs. Numbers Kambi. Leonardo Castro. Nico Obu Castro. Kuchanga Pangemba. Isaac Masia. 91 minutes. What has become of us as a nation? I heard a woman screaming and I kept quiet. And I looked away. If good men don't act now, what is to become of our women and children of this nation? A real man shall love. Not violence. Act now and stop women and children abuse. For God's sake. Kion, 
you are the leader of the new Lion Guard. I'm the what? You had the ass. You are about to embark on a great journey. Fossa, I want you all to join the new Lion Guard. Say what? We are gonna make a great team. <laughs> the Lion Guard has always been made of lions. A new Lion Guard could be very bad news for us hyenas. What are we gonna do? We'll take down all the animals we can. The hyenas! What? Kiara! Help! Oh no! So what if we're not all lions? Stop testing. Stop them. The Lion Guard, protectors of the Pride Lands. Fooly, the fastest. Crazy! Beshti, the strongest. Out of the way! Oh no, keenest of sight. Target in sight. And the bravest? It's Bunga. Tsukazama! We are the Lion Guard. Disney the Lion Guard. Thursdays and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. SABC One. It is time. Welcome to highlights of the final day of Lausanne 2020. Competition drawing to a close, but there was no let up in the action with eight gold medals decided. At the Lausanne Skating Arena, we had the Mixed National Olympic Committee Team Relay in short track speed skating. The men's six on six ice hockey tournament saw the rekindling of an old rivalry in a memorable gold medal match. And at the Valle des Joux, the Nordic Combined came to a close with the mixed team event. But first though, we head to Lausanne for the first of four big air events, men's freestyle skiing. On the last day of the Youth Olympic Games in Lausanne 2020, 12 men took part in the final of the Free Ski Big Air competition. In this event, skiers utilize their time in the air to perform well-executed tricks that need a clean landing to gain top scores. Each skier would get three jumps in the final, with the two best jumps counting towards their total score. In the first run, Matej Svanser of the Czech Republic made his mark. The 15-year-old had just missed out on a medal when his ski fell off in the slopestyle competition. This was his chance to make up for it, and with this spectacular first jump, he looked well placed to do just that. Svanser could hardly believe his own eyes when he saw the scoreboard. 91.5 put him into the lead by a big margin. 18-year-old Kiernan Fagan of the United States also did well. He started switch style and landed this 1440 degree spin nicely, moving into second place. Going into the second run, the USA's Fagan, hailing from Brownfield, Maine, continued his impressive performance with this stylish jump. A mammoth 94.2 score edged him into first place. But Oris Kovalenko of Ukraine was also looking for a place on the podium. He dropped in switch and landed this trick seamlessly. That earned him second place in the overall rankings after the second run, with Fagan of the USA in first and the 15-year-old Czech skier in third. Svanser now only had one more chance to secure his medal. He skied switch style towards the jump and launched into a 1620 spin. It was well landed. A huge score of 94.5 put Svanser back into the lead and he was guaranteed a medal. That presented a challenge for 18-year-old Kovalenko of Ukraine. He also executed his run solidly. It was enough to land him third place. The only skier who could deny Svanser the gold medal now was Kiernan Fagan of the USA. 
He had a total score of 183 going into his third run. He landed his switch 14 spin smoothly, but the score would need to be in the 90s to secure him the gold. The scores were in, but it was not quite enough. The gold would go to Svanser of the Czech Republic. I'm so hyped on this one. I'm so stoked to put the Switch 16 down because I never do it. This was my second try in my life, so I'm so stoked to be here. And it was a fun competition. Uh, it means so much. And like to have my friends up there hyping me up before I went was awesome. And have my mom here just like puts me in the best mindset and vibe, and it was awesome. I want to say special thanks for the Russian coach because before we started skiing today i'm just break my boots and he take this these boots for me like i have now so special saint thank you so the gold went to matai swanser of the czech republic the silver medal to kiernan fagan of the united states while oris kovalenko of ukraine took the bronze We'll be back for the women's freestyle skiing Big Air later in the show, but now to short track speed skating. Would these games prove to be a springboard like they have been for one former champion? The glittering Olympic career of short track speed skater Shim Suk Hee began at the 2012 Winter Youth Olympic Games in Innsbruck. Just a few days short of her 15th birthday, Shim dazzled the Austrian crowds with gold medal winning performances in the 500 and 1000 meter events and a bronze in the mixed team relay. A skating star was born in Innsbruck and confirmation of Shim's sublime talent came at the Sochi Winter Olympic Games two years later, where she claimed a medal of every color. A silver in the individual 1500 meters and a bronze in the 1000 meters came either side of a brilliant gold for Shim and career in the 3000 meter relay. Here's the finish, Korea gets the gold! She went on to strike gold again in front of her home fans in Pyeongchang in 2018, once again in the 3000 meter relay. At the Lausanne Skating Arena, it was the final day of short track speed skating. In this event, teams are comprised of two males and two females of mixed nationalities. Skaters race for 3,000 meters, the fastest team wins. In a dramatic semi-final one, Team A in the red bib took an early lead in the race, with Team C in blue keeping close by. Seven laps into the race, the team in blue staked their claim and took first place. Team G and Brown played catch up to the two runaway leaders. They needed to keep gaining ground to keep him with a chance of qualification. Gabriel Volet of France was the racer to do just that. He caught up with the leaders after a strong changeover from Chang Hui of Chinese Taipei. With 16 laps to go, it was clear that the contest remained between just three teams. Team E in purple had had a crash and were a lap behind. The top three teams were glued together with Team C in blue leading for most of the race. However, Team G's Jiang Sungwoo, the double medalist in the individual events, took a last minute inside corner to overtake Team C. Then this mistake cost the team in blue. Daniel Nikolev of the Russian Federation lost his footing and wiped out Team A's Thomas Nadalini of Italy. With Team E in purple still a lap behind, Nadalini's quick recovery meant that he still finished in second place. Team G and Brown had won, having kept composure for 3,000 metres. In semi-final two, Zhang Chutong from the People's Republic of China began strongly for Team H, and she led the opening races. No one broke away, and the skaters remained tightly packed for most of the race. In a crucial moment, Thailand's Nathapak Kancharin found himself losing pace with the rest of the pack, as Team B in green and Team F in orange took to the front. At lap 11, disaster struck for Kancharin as he wiped himself out of the race, leaving the team in white to recover. The excitement heated in lap 15 when Team B and Team F broke away and their lead increased. 
Russian skater Vladimir Belbakov and Japan's Shogo Miyata kept their composure for the final laps and crossed the line safely. Team B and Team F had qualified for the final. The final promised to be as exciting as the semis and it was Team B in green that took the early lead. Korean Kim chan -jo targeting her second medal of these games. Team B maintained the lead until Felix Pigeon from Canada overtook Jonathan So from the USA on the inside. There was tactical skating from all the teams, with clean changeovers for the first half of the race. Bad momentum on an exchange saw Team A in red falter. New Zealander Ethan the Rose had lost ground between Team B and F. The gap to the leaders didn't last long, as double gold medalist Zhou Wee Min of the Republic of Korea pulled back the deficit. All four teams jostled for places until Team F lost footing with 13 laps to go. Hungary's Barbara Samoji entered a corner with too much speed, taking her off course. That put Team F out of contention. This changeover proved pivotal. Chang Hui had closed the gap. Shogo Miyata of Japan fired out of his exchange and gave it everything on the final lap. He crossed the line, winning the team relay for Team B. Just fractions of a second behind Miyata, Jang and Brown crossed to win silver from Team G. And De Rose for Team A finished with bronze. I think our plan and our communication was perfect and I want to say thank you for my teammates. We went in with the game plan, it executed perfectly. Um, we would like to keep that strategy a secret because we're planning on becoming a team again. Beijing 2022. I'm really happy with our silver medals. Despite the fact that we didn't communicate too much because of the language barriers, I'm happy we managed to communicate on the track and we got a good result. I appreciate this. Usually in the relay, I'm in the same team with the same nationality. But for me this time it's mixed. It's a very special experience for me and a good experience too. Team A won the bronze medal, Team G with the silver and Team B take home the gold medal. Kim chan Sho ensured that an athlete from the Republic of Korea made the top of the podium on every short track speed skating event. Hey kids! What? What? It's a special sharing day today. It is? Why? Because every Monday and Tuesday, we share adventure. And we share treasure. So come along and meet new friends. Will you be my friend? I knew it! How could you say no to a cute cat like me? Stand back! Brain attack! What are we waiting for? Let's play! Rags, Mondays and Tuesdays at 12 on 2. Warriors, take a firm stance and remember, don't let your guard down. The war wages on. Everything is at stake. Evil spirits threaten the living world and it's up to the Soul Reapers to usher the lost souls into the afterlife. Bleach, Monday to Friday at 5 on 2. What's wrong, Ladybird? Uh. Our friends might still be napping. Now, really? What do you mean? So we have to remind them that fun and adventure awaits them. Rise and shine! Oh, yes! I didn't think of that. Oh! oh. We must have told nearly the entire forest by now. Thank you, Moonbear! Moonbeam Bear and Friends, Mondays and Tuesdays at 3 on 2. There's been curling almost every day of Lausanne 2020. Today saw the semi-finals and the final of the Mixed Doubles event. The semi-finals of the Mixed Doubles curling took place at the Champery Curling Arena.
Laura Nagy from Hungary and Nathan Young from Canada faced Japan's Mina Kobayashi and Leo Tsua from France. Nagi and Young won previously when these two teams played. The Japan-France team qualified for the semi-finals because their record was superior to the other losing pairs. Kobayashi and Tua had an early one-point lead, but in the second of eight ends, Nagi had a chance to draw level. She needed to get her red stone closer than the yellow stones to earn a point. She pulled off the shot. The match was tied one all. By the fourth end, the Japan-France pairing were one point behind. Tua needed an accurate delivery to secure a point for him and his partner. He was up to the task and the scores were level again. But in the sixth end, the Hungarian-Canadian duo saw an opportunity to pull away. Nagy had a chance to score two points. The Hungarian was successful. With her team three ahead, the pressure was on their opponents. In the seventh end, Nagy and Young's lead grew to 6-2. The Japan-France duo conceded the match in the eighth end and they would settle for playing for bronze. The Hungarian-Canadian team moved on to the gold medal match. In the other semi-final, the People's Republic of China's Peijing Hang, paired with the Czech Republic's Vik Chabakovsky, played France's Chana Betun and the Russian Federation's Nikolai Lysakov. In the early stages, the match was close, but a key moment came in the fourth end. Betun had a chance to earn three points for her team if she could knock a red stone from the scoring area and replace it with her own. She pulled off the shot and it put Team France-Russia 7-2 ahead. In the sixth end, Lysakov spotted an opportunity to extend their lead further. He just needed a perfectly weighted stone. His skill meant the pairing took another three points. In the seventh end, Chabakovsky and Pei were 10-4 down. The Czech produced a fine delivery with his final stone. But it was only enough to earn them one point, and the deficit was too great. The Chinese-Czech team conceded. Final score, China-Czech Republic 5, France-Russian Federation 10. And so the France-Russia team made it through to the gold medal match and will play Hungary-Canada. And the Japan-France team will battle the China-Czech Republic team for the bronze. Snowboard Big Air, as the name might suggest, is all about jumps. Big jumps. It's an individual event with athletes sliding down a slope before taking off from a lip at the bottom and getting as high as possible then performing as many technical maneuvers in the air time that follows. Scores are marked on the height of a jump, plus innovation, execution, difficulty, and a smooth landing on the snow. From the top of the platform, athletes accelerate from zero to 70 kilometers an hour in only six seconds. The takeoff is key, and in the maneuvers that follow, athletes twist their bodies to generate spin and complete spectacular tricks. Sometimes it leads to crash landings, strength, balance, speed and creativity all come into play in the snowboard Big Air. Final day of the Youth Olympic Games at Les Amps and a chance for the snowboarders to express themselves in the big air. Big jumps, aerial acrobatics and happy landings, the name of the game. After qualifying, the top 12 would have three runs each with the best two scores of the three added together to decide the medals. The more complex the jump, the higher the score. Bettina Roll of Germany went all out but crashed on landing. On home snow, the Swiss were out in force to support Bianca Gisler, a bronze medalist in the slope style. And her first run set the pace. The competition was strong. Belgium's Evie Pop won gold in the slope style, but this time her start was not great. Down on her first landing. 
The rest of the field sensed their opportunity. And Japan's Hinari Asanuma landed an outstanding first run. 93.5 points was the perfect platform for a tilt at gold with two runs still to come. The top qualifier Annika Morgan of Germany put in contention with an excellent score of 86.75. Asanuma led the way followed by Morgan but all would depend on the next two jumps. For Evie Pop, one gold medal already but a faller first time around, it was now or never. She had to land cleanly to stay in contention but fell again and her chance was gone. It looked like a showdown between the leading three from the first run, but Asanuma's hopes nosedived on her second. That opened the way for Melissa Pepperkamp to go above her, and the Dutch athlete's second score was enough to go into the gold medal position. Nerves came into play, and like Asanuma, Annika Morgan also went down and dropped out of the top three with one run to come. Pepperkamp now led the way with the home crowd favourite Bianca Gisler in second and the USA's Tai Schnorbusch in third. Then the moment of truth for Japanese Asanuma. She knew a second high score might be enough for gold and her reaction on landing told the story. Back into first place, now it would be a waiting game. Annika Morgan was next to go and also scored well, but would it be enough to overtake the Japanese? Athletes and coaches waited nervously before the scores confirmed that Asanuma was still in front. The Swiss Gisler had her chance, but second place a few minutes earlier disappeared in a flurry of snow. Only one athlete could stop Japan taking the gold. Melissa Pepperkamp was already guaranteed bronze, but knew she needed a score in the 90s to take the top prize. And with the pressure on, she came up short. At the bottom of the course, the celebrations could start for Japan's Hinari Asanuma, youth Olympic champion, with Annika Morgan second and Melissa Pepperkamp third. I'm really happy to get on the podium. I tried my best. Um, I'm really happy that I landed my runs, even though I had not that good of a practice and I kind of got injured a couple of days ago, so I'm really happy with the outcome. Gold for Japan, silver for Germany and bronze for the Netherlands. A young, inquisitive girl steps into a magical world to solve her problems and to try and make sense of things. A magical world filled with friends who welcome her and magical creatures ready to help. There's dancing, learning and victory hugs. of Lunabel, Saturday and Sunday at 5.30 on SABC2. Four explorers on a global adventure. Zuli, Kayan, Lars, Foz. They are the Go Jetters. To the broomstand. Take formation. Three, two, one. Seatbelt. Go! It's time to... Go Jetters! Uh, I don't think so, Glitch. Go Jetters, weekends at 5 on 2. From the snow to the ice, in the last two matches in the men's six-team ice hockey tournament took place on day 13. First, we'll see the battle for the bronze medal. There was huge anticipation ahead of the men's six-team ice hockey finals. Canada played Finland in the bronze medal game. Canada silver medalists in Lillehammer in 2016 were up against the gold medalists in Innsbruck in 2012. 
the first periods lived up to its billing. Canada had been stung by their semi-final defeat to the United States and took their frustration out on the Finns. Inside two minutes, Antonin Varro put Canada 1-0 up. A minute later, Canada doubled their lead. The imposing Nate Danielson tucked away the rebound from his own shot. Finland had a chance to narrow the deficit when they found themselves two on one, bearing down on the Canadian goal. But goaltender Vincent Fillion made a crucial save. Instead, it was Canada who added to their tally. Cedric Gindor made it 3 0. Finland were in trouble. The bronze medal looked to be slipping out of reach. Their next opportunity came with a five players to three power play advantage. Elmeri Laxo with this bullet like low shot into the bottom corner. 3 1 at the end of the first period, and while Canada were ahead, Finland did have some hope. Canada could have put the game beyond Finland again with a two-man power play late in the second period. The Finns were hanging on. Emil was looking the key man. Still, the puck just wouldn't go in. Thanks again to Filion in goal. There had been no score since the first period, but no shortage. In the final moments, Finland took off their goaltender to chase the equaliser, and when they lost possession, they were punished. Cedric Gindon finished into the empty net. It was game over. A 4-2 victory and a bronze medal for Canada, but fourth place Finland had plenty to be proud of too. We had a great comeback from yesterday. I thought we played well yesterday, but it wasn't the result we wanted. But I think the boys were pretty jacked up and we wanted to come home with a medal, so we got the result we wanted today and it was a good way to end off the tournament. Of course we wanted to have more, but uh, if we compare this game and, and the game yes, uh, yesterday... So Canada took home the bronze medal in the men's six-team ice hockey tournament. Some of the drama of the snow events at Lausanne 2020 in our final photo essay. The Nordic mixed team relay is truly unique. It takes place in two countries and there are six members in each team from three separate disciplines. Ten teams are taking part. They feature male and female athletes from the events of Nordic combined, ski jump and cross-country skiing. The event begins in Le Touffe in France where the Nordic combined and ski jump athletes each have one competition jump on the 90 meter hill. Then the athletes get on a bus and make the 20 kilometer journey to Switzerland, where it's the 4 by 3 and a third kilometer cross country relay featuring the Nordic combined and cross country specialist athletes. I like it very much, different format, and um, it's combining all, 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 all of the Nordic, uh, Nordic sports, and it's fine, yes. While the ski jumpers and cross-country athletes only compete in their own disciplines, Nordic Combined compete in both. Yeah, I think the Nordic Combined will have a very important part because we will do both disciplines, ski jumping and cross-country skiing. And I think the result will depend on our performance. So who will win? 
Austria have dominated the ski jumping and Nordic combined events, winning gold in four out of five. It's Austria, the best team, because they had really strong athletes. Austria will be strong, and also the, the, German, the Germans and the Norwegians will be good, yes. But there's also determination to upset the odds. We are a really strong team and we are strong both uh, in ski jumping and uh, cross country. And uh, yes, I think it's a really good opportunity for our team. It's the final prize for these athletes in the Youth Olympic Games. Who will win the accolade of the ultimate Nordic events nation? The Nordic mixed team event promised great excitement on the last day of Lausanne 2020. Ten teams took part with the spotlight first of all on the hill at Le Tooth. As a Nordic combined specialist, Gida Vestvold Hansen faced a busy day, competing in both the ski jumping and cross country. The Norwegian made a promising start. Josephine Panier of France was familiar with this slope, having trained on it many times. Knowledge that was put to good use. Panier perfectly built for this discipline and France moved into a good position. Jessica Malsina was part of a highly rated Italian team. Tipped as medal contenders and the Italians wouldn't be far off the lead once the 40 athletes had completed their jumps. The furthest jump came from David Hagen. It mattered as well because the Austrian team needed the points and were serious challenges for the gold medal. Points were converted into time differences for the cross country. A single point was worth just over a one second advantage in the relay. So these are the standings after the ski jumping. Norway led Austria with Italy and France in pursuit. The focus switched to Valle de Joux, where the cross-country skiers took over. Gida Vestvold Hansen was the first to go for Norway. Twelve seconds later, Johanna Bassini from Austria, keen to close the gap. Norway's lead was halved early on as Bassini gave chase. However, Vestvold Hansen wasn't worried. She had plenty of energy left and stretched Norway's lead by the first changeover. Italy remained well placed, although Stefano Radovan didn't make the start he wanted. An unfortunate trip and the Italians were in for an eventful time in this race. Sebastian Ustvold, a bronze medalist in the Nordic combined individual event, increased Norway's lead. This scenic Swiss course provided a tough test for these endurance athletes. Austria were comfortable in second place as Severin Reiter took up the challenge for them. The gold was out of reach, but silver in their sights. The bronze was up for grabs, and on the penultimate leg, Julie Pirel was getting every encouragement as she tried to close the gap on Italy. Eventually, she caught Silvia Campioni. Italy were relegated to fourth. Norway knew they had the gold medal from a long way out. Nikolai Holmbo with the honour of leading them home. Yet another moment of triumph for the Norwegian, who'd already won one gold and a silver at these games. Another gold medal to add to his collection. The race for bronze took another twist when Elia Bart put Italy into third place again, overtaking Luc Prime of France. The crucial move made on the final hill. So confirmation of Norway. We're happy. Nordic team, and it's just an amazing feeling. I'm so satisfied about this third place, and I'm grateful to all my teammates, and we did a great job.
So the bronze medal went to Italy. Austria won the silver medal with Norway the gold medalist in the Nordic mixed combined at Lausanne 2020. Her grieving parents are left to pick up the pieces. I saw Elizabeth, Steve. What do you mean you saw Elizabeth? The next day, under the cover of darkness. Are you okay? And the battle ensues to reunite and heal as a family. I believe you, Lara. They all think we're crazy, but we know better, huh? Right. Elizabeth's Gift, this Sunday at 4 on 2. Join SABC2 on a breathtaking journey of discovery. It says island, and that looks to me like an island over there. What you guys can see is a head with a two antennae. See Yaya, Wildest King, Wednesday at 4, SABC2. Door to everything and everywhere. Open there is only the one Gogo who can open up a universe of wonder and challenge your mind. Are you all ready to learn about fractions? Well, Gogo, yes, Sanele. And these are all types of solids. Is butter a solid or not? Yes, it is, Gogo. You're the one who makes learning fun. I'm glad to hear that. The Epic Hangout, Monday and Tuesday at 4 on 2. There's more drama from the Big Air events to come after an inspirational tale of friendship which has helped some skiers try to achieve their Olympic dreams. It's a great pleasure to see them here. They have big smiles. They are enthusiastic. It's very contagious. That's my salary. Their smiles, their joy is my salary. What more could you wish for? My name is Pascal Gersh, and I've been the mentor of the Mongolian team since 2017. For 12 years, I was the doctor of the Swiss Nordic skiing team. I was the coach of a university team that won the Swiss championship several times. So I had the idea about cross-country skiing. A few years ago, I unexpectedly found myself near Dadal in Mongolia. I said as a joke they should have a cross-country skiing race there, the Genghis Khan Trophy. It was a joke, but there was, in fact, a small team in a nearby village. The following day, I went to give them a lesson. Their equipment was antiquated and totally obsolete. So I made a promise that I would help them. When I returned to Switzerland, I learned that these games were happening. And so the idea was born to try to form a Mongolian team for this great event. It was a period of about 40 years when the Soviets were in Mongolia, during which time skiing was popular. When they left, it stopped. The piece disappeared, the skiers disappeared. The equipment, nothing, the coaches, wretched. The mess was enormous. So it was like I had to raise the phoenix from the ashes. It was a crazy dream, but they are here because they deserve to be. They've competed in France, in Sweden, lots of races, and they've done enough to be selected. For me, it's not who chose them, nor the Mongolians. It's down to the Olympic Games and the FIS. They said you can come, you've achieved the required standards. The aim isn't to finish on the podium. If they're among the top half, that's a success. 
They are too young. Two years of skiing is not enough. To make a good cross-country skier, you need at least six years. My hope is that when I'm 80 years old, I'll see them competing in the Olympic Games in Milan and Cortina in 2026. An excited gathering of young fans at Les Arts for one of the glamour events, the freestyle skiing Big Air. Twelve athletes qualified for the final, one big trick-filled jump was the test, three attempts each. But unlike the slope style and half pipe, not one but the best two jumps added together would count here, so this was a test of consistency too. Big air means great height off the jumps, and with that comes some heavy falls. The very first athlete, Mia Rennie of Australia, landed in a heap. Thankfully, she was able to walk away. Great Britain's Kirsty Muir was the first to make a big statement. Having just missed a medal in the slope style, she leapt into the lead with a score of 82.5 points. The two-run score meant the medal contenders could not afford to throw runs away. Ailing Gu of China, already with a gold and silver in the bag from half-pipe and slope style, was last to go. But a first-run fall ramped up the pressure. She would now have to come up with two big scores from the remaining two runs if she was to add a third medal from these Youth Olympic Games. But Kirsty Muir, a bronze medalist at the World Junior Championships, was still in great shape after that big first run score. And now a combined score of 161 had the British skier right at the top. Much would depend on the other big names now under pressure. Sweden's Jenny Lee Bermanson had to deliver second time around and did. 75.5 took her closer to the medal places. But the real pressure was on Ailing. The US-based Chinese athlete was still outside the medals, but a repeat of that jump in the final run would put her right in contention once more. On the final run, the athletes jumped in reverse order, and Jenny Lee Bermanson, who'd reached the final of the slope style in the Pyeongchang Olympics, moved into silver medal position. As the tension built, the fans knew what came next would be key, Aileen Gu's final run. With her heart set on a second gold of these games, the 16-year-old increased the difficulty of her jump by coming in backwards, or switch as it's known, and again she delivered. A score of 81.5 meant a combined total of 171.25 from her two best jumps. Once again, she produced an excellent jump, her third in succession, the most consistent of all the athletes in the final. But agonizingly, it was not quite enough. Her two best scores of the three were a fraction short of Ailing Gu. So near yet so far, and the Chinese could celebrate another gold. The margin of victory could barely have been closer. Gu was championed by just 1.25 points. I definitely was feeling the pressure, but I was I think being able to perform under pressure. Um, I'm very proud of the way that I performed. And seeing that... Goal to China, Gu's second of the games, silver to Great Britain and bronze to... Gold medal at stake. At the Vaudois Arena, it was time for one of the most highly anticipated matchups of Lausanne 2020. The Russian Federation faced the United States in the men's six-team ice hockey final. The tournament's two best teams would go head-to-head -head for the gold medal. The atmosphere was electric. Play inside the first two minutes, Russia seized the advantage. Matvey Michkov, who had looked a goal threat throughout the tournament, 
was given too much time and snuck a shot just wide. He was alert, picked up the puck and almost grabbed a second. Russia were on top. With time running out, on the line. Michkov reacted fastest to make it 2 0. Artom Duda's pass was aimed at Michkov, but when he was denied, Ruslan Gazizov followed up. At 3 0, it looked like Russia were heading for the gold medal. The United States were forced to chase the game, and that put them at risk of conceding. At 4 0, there was no way back for the US. There were wild celebrations from the Russians on the buzzer. You could see just what this victory meant on such a high-profile occasion. For the United States, there was disappointment at losing the final, but also pride in their performance. The Russians were delighted. Just pure happiness. I'm very proud to receive this medal. I'm very proud to represent my country. I can't express my emotions because this thing can only happen once in a lifetime, or maybe never. Silver medal, that's crazy. The gold, yeah. The United States took home the silver medal. For, the For these stars of the future, it was a moment they will never forget. to comprehend the death of a child. What do you mean you saw Elizabeth? The next day, under the cover of darkness. Are you okay? And the battle ensues to reunite and heal as a family. I believe you, Laura. But I can have never my son for a long time. And here is the manier of the day. Terwijl ons van die land sien weer en weer. Moenie is seisoen 2 van authentiek misloop nie. Woensdag 6 november is ABC 2. A young inquisitive girl steps into a magical world to solve problems and to try and make sense of things. There's dancing, learning, and victory hugs. The magical world of Lunabelle, Saturday and Sunday at 5.30 on SABC2. We're going to see how the medals were decided in the mix. Teams of two curlers from different nations had fought their way through five rounds to make it this far. The bronze medal match saw the people's a difficult route. She delivered the stone with perfect weight and earned her pairing two points and a 3-1 lead. He managed to nudge a red stone away from the scoring area, but also dislodged one of his own yellow stones. So although he had to... She took one point and that put victory in sight, heading into the eighth and final end. 7-3 victory for the Chinese Czech team and a bronze medal. Uh, this game, uh, we... All games, class, yeah.
The gold medal match saw Hungary's Laura Nash Place of time, and they started the match strong. In the first of eight ends, Hungary's Nagi had an opportunity to take three points if she could remove her rival's yellow stone from the center. Yeah. Young needed to find a way to get his red stone closer to the center of the target. In the third end, the pressure was on Russia's Lysakov to remove his opponent's red stone and get on the scoreboard. But he misjudged the delivery, so the French-Russian team profited. Could a comeback be on? Now the score was 7-3. In the sixth end, Lysakov needed pinpoint accuracy to close the gap by another two points. Final end. With the final stone of the gold medal game, Francis Baton needed to pull off an extremely difficult shot. The aim was to remove the red stone in scoring position and keep her three stones near the middle to tie the match and force an extra end. But it proved too difficult a task that meant Nagi and Young had won the gold. Forty-eight teams participated in the mixed doubles tournament, and now the medals were to be awarded. Oh, it means so much, you know. Uh, like we had didn't even know each other, you know, five days ago or four days ago, probably. Yeah. And uh, I think I think we know each other a little better now. Yeah. yeah, a little better. And no, it just it means so much to be able to uh, come out of this with with a medal is just a huge bonus. I am really proud because we won this medal together. It was amazing to win it with my partner. So it was bronze for the China-Czech Republic duo. The France-Russia team took silver. And it was gold for the couple from Hungary and Canada. It was the last day of the Youth Olympic Games and the final of the men's snowboard big air competition. Soaring heights and breathtaking spins were key to this event. Twelve athletes would get three jumps each, with the best two counting towards the total score. Early on it became clear that this final would be dominated by 17-year-old Ryo Makimata of Japan. Looking calm as he cruised toward the jump on his first run, he executed this impressive front triple 1440 degree spin. Although the landing was not perfect, the judges nonetheless awarded him a huge 96.5 score. Going into the second run, there was another Japanese snowboarder staking a claim for the podium. 15-year-old Aoto Kawakami decided to try a daring 1440 degree spin and he landed it nicely. Kawakami moved into first place with a clean 96 score. But his lead wouldn't last long. 16-year-old Liam Brearley of Ontario in Canada was to score well with his second run. He performed a well-executed trick which landed him his second score in the 90s and it was enough to take top spot. But this was a real battle and it sparked a magnificent response from Japan's Ryoma Kimata. He delivered this trick, an elegant cab 1440 degree spin. It earned him a massive 98.5 score and the lead. Could anyone beat that? In the final run, Kawakami would need a high score just to keep in the medal positions. He dropped in forwards and landed a triple spin with a double grab beautifully. That made it two unbelievably strong runs. The big question was, what would his total score be? The answer, 95.75, which secured him the silver medal. Knowing he would be assured of the bronze medal, Brearley settled for a safe but stylish front 360-degree spin. 
it left a glory run for Japan's Kimata, he had already secured the gold medal and rounded off the event with an effortless looking run. Kimata had done his hard work in the first two runs to ensure he was youth Olympic champion. I did what I wanted to do and I won, so I'm very happy. Today I was able to perform what I have been practicing and I believe I delivered. Crazy, unlike I, anything I ever expected and I'm super happy that I did it three times. So it was a 1-2 for Japan, gold to Ryoma Kimata and silver for Aoto Kawakami. Liam Brearley of Canada took the bronze medal. After another memorable Winter Youth Olympic Games, it was time to say farewell to Lausanne 2020 with the closing ceremony in the Medals Plaza. After 13 days of competition, culture and celebration, we have reached the conclusion of the third Winter Youth Olympic Games. Welcome to the closing ceremony. Buy like a product, but in the air, dear athletes, met bewijzen wat steeds niet sille. Ons einde ons tour af met de luchttoerkie vlug oor die klein karo. Moet het niet mis nie. Woensda aan a half acht op SABC twee. Entrepreneurs. <laughs> 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 ah, at last.